Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a 2011 style handgun that's meant for people who want a 2011 or a Staccato, but don't wanna pay 2011 or Staccato prices. And that handgun is the Apollo 11 from Live Free Armory. So full disclosures out of the way, I did not pay for this handgun. Live Free Armory did send this to me a few months ago for review, so know that. But I have been running this gun off and on over those past few months, as well as conducting a few different tests. And I'll be the first one to tell you guys that I am not a 2011 expert or a 1911 guy by any means. I don't even own a 1911 before getting this gun. The closest thing that I have to a 1911 or a 9mm 1911 is this gun right here. This is the Browning High Power. Uh, this gun is the one that's in my hand right here is actually the first gun that I ever shot as a kid. This gun used to belong to my dad and he gifted it to me. So this thing means a lot to me and is one of my favorite handguns, but it's sort of close to a nine millimeter 1911, still a John Moses Browning design. It's actually the last gun that he did design. So it's pretty similar, but since getting this gun right here, it sort of gave me a look into, you know, why everyone likes 2011 style handguns. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over my experience with this handgun, as well as kind of going over over the features and what I think about it. So before we start going over this gun, what is the main selling point of this thing? Well, the main selling point is the price. This thing comes in just under $1,000, around the $970 range, and this gun is completely made here in the United States. So this isn't some like weird Turkish gun or anything like that. It's made by a couple guys down in Melbourne, Florida, so it's cool to support you know US businesses. And you could tell there's a few things about this gun that are a little bit more budget-minded, which we'll get into. But overall, this gun looks pretty nice. It doesn't really throw off any of the uh, cringe factor to me. I think it is a nice looking handgun, especially here on the slide. But we'll go into a few different things where I sit there. Some cuts were made to make this thing a cheaper handgun. And it's still kind of an expensive handgun compared to like a Glock or something like that. But if you're looking for a 2011 style handgun, $170 is not bad. All right guys, so going over the handgun, we're gonna start off with the slide. I actually like the slide on this thing a lot. Uh, some people were complaining that the uh, Cerakote finish on here was a little bit too smooth and they weren't getting the purchase that they want wanted out of this handgun. I haven't ran into that problem. I've ran this gun when it was wet, cold, whatever. Um, the gun is incredibly smooth. Even now, um, one thing I will say, over the thousand rounds that I fired through this gun, I haven't cleaned this thing once um, since getting it. Um, never put any oil on it or anything like that because that's kind of like how I like to test uh, most firearms, especially my AKs, I kind of transferred that over to this pistol. And I just wanted to see how long this gun would run without me running into any issues. And over those thousand rounds, I haven't ran into a single malfunction right. that was in like normal firing conditions, minus some torture tests, which we'll get into here. Another thing about the slide here, guys, is you can see there's not a lot of wear going on here, which you might see on a lot of Cerakote finishes when you're drawing it out of a Kydex holster especially. But after using this thing for the past few months, I'm not seeing any type of like excessive uh, wear on the uh, actual finish here. So that is something to note that the Cerakote finish they got on here is pretty good and you're not gonna see any type of like weird scuffing on it. So on the back of the slide here, you can see that it is cut for an optic. This is for an RMSC style red dot. I don't own one of those things with, or a red dot with an RMSC footprint. So just running the iron sights. The gun does have pretty good iron sights on it. It has this tritium uh, front sight on here, which I do like. One thing I will say though, um, when I got this gun, the factory zero on this gun was way off. It was like six, six inches to the left um, at like 15 yards, which is no bueno. But if you are a competent individual and have a few basic tools like a punch and a hammer, you can just hammer um, and punch over the uh, front sight here. And I pushed it over to the left a little bit. Now it is shooting straight. So that is one thing I ran into. You typically want your guns to be good out of the box with a good factory zero, especially your handguns. But this one did not, just something to note. Moving back to you, you can see it has an ambidextrous safety on here. I haven't had any issues with this safety, but I have had seen people break the, um, the ambi safety here on the right here. Um, this safety on the left side, this feels kind of normal and solid. This one on the right here is kind of like, I don't know, a little janky. <laughs> so I have seen people break off this thing right here. Um, it is what it is, you can buy replacement parts for it. So that is part of one of the uh, cost saving things on this gun. Some of the parts on here are 
uh, not of the quality as you might find on a Staccato or more expensive 2011. And that includes some of the pins like the slide stop on here as well. I have heard of people breaking those as well. If it does break, um, you can buy replacement parts for it, but just know that, that some of these parts on here are not of the qualities you might find on a nicer 1911 or 2011 cell handgun. Now moving on down here, you can see it does have a rail on here for any of your lights and stuff like that. Right now I have a Surefire, um, just X300 mounted on here. And this gun does fit in any of your 2011 style holsters. I got this holster from Traditional Arms and it fits in there perfectly. So if you're looking for a holster for this thing, just get any of your 2011 style holsters of a similar style. Now moving down here guys to the grip module and this is where you're gonna see some more of that cost savings. And if you can notice it here on camera and you'll definitely notice it when you pick up this gun is that this grip module here is 3D printed. Um, this isn't to say that this is like weak or anything like that or it's gonna break on you. It is made out of like PA12 nylon. So it's very durable, but you can definitely tell that it is 3D printed. You can see it here in the uh, trigger guard here as well. The uh, back strap here is made out of aluminum, but this actual grip right here is 3D printed. It actually has a nice texture to it. it feels good in the hand. It's pretty aggressive, but um, I don't know. It doesn't look like super bad to me. It kind of has that like mass produced weapon in a factory to outfit armies to go conquer the galaxy feel to me. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's, uh, you know, gonna break on me or anything like that, but it does kind of take away some of the style points when it comes to a pistol like a 1911 or a 2011 cell handgun. As far as the trigger goes, it is a pretty decent trigger. It's a four pound trigger and it is broken in now, but when you first get this gun, you definitely get that uh, metal trigger on 3D printed plastic feel where it kind of feels like it's rubbing along there. Uh, it doesn't feel like that anymore, but when I first got this gun, it felt like, like it felt like this trigger was rubbing along this plastic which again, kind of goes into that cost savings factor on it. Um, it's not a huge deal now, but when I first got this gun, I was like, ugh, it kind of feels a little wonky. But overall, now it's a pretty decent trigger, has a little bit of uh, take up, maybe more than you'd want on a 2011 of a more expensive make, but as far as I could tell, it's a decent trigger and it does what it's supposed to do. Now in the thousand rounds that I have put through this gun, all of that ammunition has been 124 grain factory select ammo from Badlands Ammunition. So just standard kind of range style ball ammunition. Um, but I have heard that this gun has issues feeding hollow point ammunition. Um, in this magazine, in these two magazines right here, I have them fill, full up of 148 grain Winchester white box hollow point ammunition. And we're gonna test this out to see if this gun does indeed have problems running this. Um, and then in my opinion, if a gun cannot run hollow point ammunition, that kind of takes it out of its the race to be used as like a defensive style handgun or for anything other than like just flat range shooting. So we're gonna test that right now. We're gonna put three mags of these um, Checkmate mags. So this is the magazine that came with the gun. Um, this gun only ships with one magazine. Kind of wish it came with more, but I did secure two more Checkmate mags and these are just like staccato style magazines. So there's 17 rounds in these magazines. We're gonna put three magazines through this gun, all full of this hollow point ammunition and see if it chokes on it. All right guys, so I got a steel target down there and we're gonna put three mags again of all this hollow point ammunition through this Apollo 11 and we'll see if it chokes up on any of these rounds here. Um, again, I have not cleaned this gun since owning it. I have a thousand rounds through this gun already, plus some torture tests that I did. Um, so if it runs through all these mags, I'd say it's good to go, but I have never ran hollow point ammunition through this gun yet. So it should be a surprise for both of us. All right guys, so Winchester white box, 148 grain hollow point ammunition through the Apollo 11. So first malfunction. Second malfunction. Jesus. I mean, <laughs> it's not running, I'm good. I need to pick up all these hollow point <laughs> rounds right here. I'm losing hollow points. All right, let's try to get through this mag. Jesus, it is a feed ramp for sure.
Uh, I don't think it's worth testing. Let's put a mag of just the uh, Badlands ammo, just ball ammunition, and see if it runs through that. All right, guys, so we got all that hollow point ammunition out of this magazine, and we filled it full of this 124 grain ammo from Badlands ammo, so just standard ball ammunition, and we'll see if it runs through all this. All right. As you can see, it ran through all of that ball ammunition perfectly fine, but when it came to the hollow point ammo, it did not like it at all. And it has to do with the feed ramps on this thing. And that is kind of an issue for me. Uh, if you want a gun to be considered seriously for like a defensive role or maybe even used for law enforcement or military and stuff like that, it's got to run hollow point ammunition. Pistols suck at killing people um, to begin with. So you need everything in your favor for this thing to be effective and hollow point ammunition is widely considered to be the best type of ammo to use for that. So since this gun cannot be used with hollow point ammunition, that is an issue for me. Now, if you're using standard ball ammunition in this thing, this thing has been very reliable. I haven't had a single malfunction using just standard ammunition in regular shooting. I even decided to put this thing through a few different kind of torture tests a few nights ago. I decided to just douse this thing in water and stick it in my freezer in the garage, take it out of the freezer and try shooting it the next morning. I couldn't shoot it right away because it was just frozen solid, but after I decided to go back to the house, grab a canteen of water, and by the time I got back, it was thawed out enough to start shooting. It was actually kind of looked like it was running in slow motion. Uh, it was kind of cycling through the ammo because the slide was still kind of frozen, but it did cycle through that ammo, um, even if it was frozen uh, just like five minutes prior to that. So I think that is kind of impressive. After the ice test, I immediately went over to this kind of like muddy puddle and decided to throw it in there. And it was this puddle beside my house and it was had a bunch of residue from when they were building my house, a bunch of clay as well as like concrete residue in there. Threw it in that puddle and it was able to shoot. I actually had to like cycle it manually a few times, but it wasn't uh, anything like too bad. And after just kind of running it under a hose for a while. It started working perfectly fine. And I haven't cleaned it like on the inside since doing that test even now. So overall, a pretty reliable handgun if you're using the right type of ammunition. But since this thing cannot use hollow point ammunition, that again is a problem for me and kind of makes me question who this gun is designed for. So overall guys, I think that this thing is pretty cool uh, for the price that you're getting. You're getting a 2011 style handgun. But again, I have to ask like, who is this gun really designed for? It's, you know, if it's, since it can't run hollow point ammunition or at least they, until they can fix that issue, I don't think this thing is meant for police or military and anything like that. But if you're like a competition shooter and want to get into that 2011 game um, and you do not have the funds to do so, maybe pick one of these things up. I think this thing would be completely reliable for you in any of like the match conditions that you might be in. Um, I haven't had any type of reliability issues. There have also been reports of small parts breakage on these guns, uh, especially when people have been taking them apart and stuff like that. Um, but there are replacement parts and this gun might be for someone who also wants to get in that 2011 game and wants to upgrade it as you go. So I think this might be a good starter gun for that. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at BlueJeanOperator or go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, Patreon, love you guys. You help me out a ton. You guys help me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. And it gets you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.